Now, Dave, if you've got about 250 quid to spend on a new cycling computer, then we have two very, very good options here in the form of Wahoo's latest Element Bolt and Garmin's Edge 530. But which one is worth the money? We're going to be doing some non-scientific testing uh, and give them some scores. Which is your favourite? Comment below and let us know which one you would spend your £250 on. Uh, let's get down to that scoring and starting with what you get. With both, you get the computer itself, obviously. Um, you get some kind of out front mount, a stem slash bar mount, a charging cable, all important. Um, you get the instructions that, let's be honest, we've never read. Each of them does something a little better than the other. So Wahoo's mount is more aero, apparently. Save you vital seconds, oh, yeah. absolutely. And it does look very nice compared to the chunky Garmin mount. Um, but the Garmin mount allows you to attach an external battery pack which allows you to charge the Garmin as you go, which is really handy on a multi-day ride. So that's a bit of a dead heat, really. Um, good start for both. Yeah. So in terms of the physical features, the Garmin has a 2.6 inch display with a 246 by 322 pixel resolution. The battery is a claimed 20 hours, best case scenario, yeah. obviously. Uh, you get IPX7 water resistance and the unit weighs 75 grams. The charging cable in this is a slightly dated micro USB. Yeah, the uh, Wahoo on the other hand, it loses out in terms of screen size slightly with a 2.2 inch display and it also loses out on resolution with a 240 by 320 pixels. Um, although the difference really is tiny. Yeah, exactly. It's a 64 color screen rather than full color, but you're not going to be browsing photos on it, so you should really be okay here. Uh, battery is also down at a claimed 15 hours, but it matches the Garmin's IPX7 waterproofing. Uh, where the Bolt V2 wins is on weight. This thing is just 68 grams. Um, you also get the more robust USB-C charging cable. I can't really feel the 7 no. grams if I'm honest. No. Yeah. Overall, the Garmin Edge is this one. It's a little bit bigger, the screen is a bit posher, and the battery life is longer. Okay, on to setup. And this really needs very little introduction or discussion. Uh, the Wahoo has been better at this for years and that remains the case. The smartphone app is simple to use and along with making initial setup a breeze, you can customize the data fields from the app. Yeah, uh, so great. Garmin's Connect app isn't awful, but it isn't the most user-friendly app. And uh, beyond initial setup and syncing, there's little you can use it for. All of your customization needs to be done on the Edge 530 head unit, which does take a little bit of time. So the points here go to the Wahoo. Yeah, they do. So much easier to set up. So Dave, looks are important. In your opinion, which one is nicer? Well, this is gonna go down to personal preference a bit, but you know, I'd say both of them look pretty good. The Garmin's screen is quite reflective compared to the Wahoo. So in bright sunlight, you do get times uh, when the screen's a bit tricky to read, but generally it's perfectly clear. Basically, you're not gonna have to put a paper bag on either of them on your bars, are they? They both look fine. Whether you like the sleeker Garmin look or the slightly chunkier aesthetic of the Wahoo, down to you. Again, it's a bit of a dead heat, really. So while the setup process and smartphone integration is dominated by Wahoo, Garmin for me easily takes the win when we look at features. Both get Strava Live for all you keen com hunters and you'll get a host of compatibility with indoor training apps. Yep, um, both will connect to electronic gears as well from Shimano and from SRAM and from Campagnolo. And you can pull in training sessions from a selection of sites like today's plan and training peaks. Yeah. Um, the Garmin, though, just keeps on going. It keeps the features going, really. You can um, you could just about replace your cycling yeah. coach with this little, little chap here. It's got built-in suggested uh, workouts. It's got dynamic performance monitoring and training status. Um, it's not perfect, no. obviously, 
but it does give you a really good idea of what you should be doing each day. Yeah, I quite like using it. Again, not perfect, but it, you know, it does suggest some good stuff. Now, Dave, my favorite bit of the new Garmin's um, is that if you plan a route to follow using the Edge 530, for example, you'll also activate Climb Pro. Uh, this might sound like a bit of a gimmick, but it's actually one of the most useful features that I've used on the newer generation of Garmin's. And Climb Pro gets better as the hill that it's guiding you up gets longer or steeper. Um, it's a great tool for helping you pace your efforts, and it's especially helpful when you're riding route that you don't really know as you can see how far from home the climbs are. Um, I don't know why it's just mentally nice for me. Um, anyway, you can also see how far you have to go until each of the listed climbs, which is great for timing your energy giving Mars, Snickers or for the older rider marathon bars so that you're fueled optimally for each climb. Other chocolate bars are available. Uh, they are. Amazing that you'd like a climbing feature. Yes, must say that. that, absolutely. Now, away from your obsession with going uphill quickly, there's a host of off-road features too. Grit rates the difficulty of your ride, uh, and then flow is for trail riding. Uh, it gives you a score based on how smoothly you're carving your way down the single mm. track. So if you break too much and mess up your cornering, like I do, uh, scars to prove it yeah. on my arm here, um, your score would be very good. As you get better, your flow score will improve. And you know, it certainly helped me to stay away from the brakes like good mountain bikers do. I'm not a good mountain biker. I wish I was a good mountain biker. <laughs> anyway, for features, the Garmin takes that one. So let's talk about navigation. The new Element Bolt features what Wahoo calls smart navigation, which was previously only available on the Element Roam. Uh, this means that if you stray from a route that you're following, the Element Bolt will automatically reroute you. This is a pretty big step forward and um, that bit is working well. Yeah, I mean, it's not foolproof, but it's, it's pretty useful. I mean, Garmin's Edge, 530 does much the same thing. It has a color screen, the map's really easy to read, and like the Wahoo, if you go off course, the Garmin will get you back on the right track. And, you know, our testing has shown both devices to be really good for this. Like yeah. I say, sometimes it's a bit esoteric, yes. but uh, not usually it's useful. Yeah. Uh, while routing on the Wahoo's Element Roam is very good, there have been some issues experienced by our reviewers and the likes of DC Rainmaker. Um, so Matt Brett has reported some of um, those issues too. The Bolt has been uh, just slightly late on the turn notifications. Mm. Um, thankfully, Wahoo seems to have fixed this issue um, with some updates. Getting pre-made routes onto both devices from the likes of Strava and Komoot is really easy these days. There's proper syncing uh, now, so there's really no difference yeah, between the absolutely. devices. Although where I'd suggest that the devices differ is, again, that smartphone app. So the yep. Wahoo is able to uh, mid-ride, just take a location pin that you've dropped on the app and then navigate to that. The Garmin Edge 830, the next one up does solve that problem somewhat, so you get that touch screen off the um, Garmin Edge 1030, which is really, yeah. really good, and it allows you to kind of pinch and zoom and rotate the map around, drag it around, around until you find the spot you want, yeah. and then drop your pin. So it's very much like a smartphone yeah. in use, but with the Edge 530, because there's no touch screen, you have to use the buttons, makes it a bit, of a, it makes a it a bit, bit of a pain. Of yeah. yeah. Right then, Dave. Time for our highly scientific scoring to um, suggest the lovely people which one they should part with their money for. Um, I think that this comes down to the classic divide, for me anyway, between Garmin and Wahoo, which is features versus functionality. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Wahoo is the easy one to set up and customize, and you get a better app to support the head unit. The small details, like the thing we talked about with dropping the pin um, to navigate, that all that kind of stuff works better in the Wahoo ecosystem than it does on the Garmin. I mean, really, if you're buying for navigation, then you'll be happy with either device. Um, the mapping is extensive on both, and the color screens make things very easy to read again on both devices. I would, however, say that if you're after a huge range of features, 
then the Garmin should take your money. Things like the Climb Pro and coaching features are, in my opinion, really very oh, good. Are you mentioning the Climb Pro again? Funny that. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, there are our thoughts and our scores, but which one would you go for? Have you already bought one of these cycling computers? Uh, if you have, tell us about your experiences of using it in the comments below. And while you're there, give this video a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe too, and we'll see you next time.